Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good day. We are live for this week's Sunday live stream, and this is going to be part two to our sleep solutions discussion. I'm excited to get through some more of your comments and stories today and potential solutions. Um, so the goal of this conversation is to try to throw out as many ideas as we can to help anybody who's struggling with sleep on low carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore, because I noticed a drastic difference when I messed with my macros starting in February. <clears throat> and um, so it sucks to lose sleep. And I am somebody who's very crabby and like, it's hard for me to live when um, I don't get enough sleep. And so um, I was actually surprised that more of you responded in the initial poll to, you know, saying that, yes, it's either a current problem right now for you. I'm pulling this, this old poll from last week up. 42% said, yes, it's a problem right now. 26% said sometimes, but you're not sure why. So that was the majority of, of the 200, over 200 votes we got in the poll now two weeks back. Um, and last week we discussed just some of the things that, that I was researching and looking up in terms of, you know, what could be some possible reasons for this and what could be some possible solutions that we could try. Um, cause sleep is so important. We all know that. Right. And when you lose sleep, it's just, it's not a good day and it's not, it's not healthy and it affects, it's like a ripple effect onto everything else. It affects your hormones. It affects your mood. It affects your, even your glucose and like, you know, different things. And I've been tracking a lot more this month too. I've kind of, you know, made a new commitment to myself and I've, I've posted a couple videos more on that, that introspective side, um, this last, over the last couple weeks about how I kind of went through some struggle days where I was just feeling kind of defeated and, and not very optimistic for a little while. And one of the things that really helped me is to get some new stuff, you know, sometimes that actually works, you know, um, I know people say, Oh, when you want to, you know, start working out or, or go in the gym more, getting yourself a new pair of shoes, you know, gym shoes or a couple new outfits to do yoga in or something is a good motivator, right? And I always kind of thought, well, oh, that's silly. But I got myself an air fryer this week, which has literally changed my life. It's making high fat so much easier and so much more convenient. My kid is getting on board with this even, which is makes me so happy. And I got my new um, ketone monitor. I had an old keto mojo and I was able to find a link that um, allowed me to upgrade, excuse me, <clears throat> to their new meter because they don't make the strips for the, the meter that I had anymore. Um, so I got to upgrade that meter for free. I just had to buy some like a strip, a uh, 60 strip package. So that came and I started testing my glute glucose and ketones. And I'm, so I'm seeing progress in that area and that's so motivating. And so that's kind of my little intro for just, um, not that you have to buy things in order to make progress or, or make yourself feel better, but sometimes it does work and it just makes anything that makes your life easier or can motivate you in some way, um, to keep moving forward by tracking or measuring something sometimes does help. And so I'm actually feeling really good today, even though I've had disrupted sleep the past few days, because we've had a sick little one. And she's on the men, she's feeling much better today. But um, the past few nights, I did not like go to sleep at the same time. It was all different. I was up multiple times. And so even with that, I still feel better. And I'll share with you my my um, glucose and ketone readings this morning too. But I want to jump in here and say hi to all of you. Let's see, Rob, Rob struck eight. Um, I'm 65 and an early riser anyway, but yeah, 3 a.m. happens often. Yeah, so the title of, of today's talk is, you know, are you waking up at 3 a.m.? Because that's what was happening to me. Um, and I've had some interesting changes. And so I'd be curious, uh, Rob, to hear, like, what's a normal wake up time for you? And then perhaps how often are you waking up at 3 a.m.? You know, kind of a little bit more of the parameters around that, because I hear a lot of people saying that, 
you know, they just need, they feel like they just need less sleep. Like they feel fine on five to six hours and waking up at three or four in the morning is working out pretty decent for them. And I do find that that, that is happening to me a little bit. I'm feeling less tired, even if this does happen or like the last couple nights when I had a completely whacked sleep schedule. Um, I didn't feel so incredibly zombie dead tired the next couple days. And now that information partnered with my ketone reading and stuff like that is, is encouraging me that maybe that is part of what I'm going through is the transition away from needing nine or 10 hours in bed every night to feel somewhat rested like I was before. So good morning. Thanks for being here. Or good day to you wherever you are. Uh, Darren Earp one. Good morning, Nia. Good morning. Yesterday was so spot on what I needed. Thank you. Oh, the video from yesterday. Good. Yeah. And I see, oh, you're so generous. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. That means a lot. And yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for that. I, I'm glad the video kind of hit, hit well with you because that's, you know, sometimes I even hesitate to post that stuff because it's a little bit more, you know, it takes a little bit more vulnerability. It takes a little bit more, um, you know, that introspective side of myself to talk about that kind of stuff. But I really, I feel such a connection when I make videos like that or more like um, that's kind of just what comes out of me sometimes. And I, so I really hope that it does help and encourage people because sometimes I think, and I don't know if this is a product strictly of just online content, it's kind of hard to tell, but you know, it can get very, it's hard sometimes to make videos or make content or have conversations when you are trying to be somebody who is knowledgeable and helping others and, and wants to have the answers, right? And then it's, it's hard sometimes when you feel like you yourself, even though like I've been through a decade or more of of learning about this stuff and experimenting on myself and reading books and watching videos and, and learning, 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 learning. Sometimes I feel like I still don't have the answer, right? Kind of like what we're talking about today. Like I didn't really ever struggle with sleep like I am until this, you know, this past month. And so um, it's kind of hard to find that balance, right? Of how, how we communicate our journey and, and how we try to help um, when we're not feeling like we even know all the answers, you know, and I know none of us really do. Right. And so I, I try to balance what I say on here as much as I can, because I want to be real with everyone and, and let you guys know that, you know, I don't have perfect days every day. I still struggle with a lot of the things that I think we all do. Right. And to create a picture of my life or my experience or my, um, just the way that I feel every day that is seen, you know, online, it, if it looks like, oh, I'm perfect and I never struggle and I'm always, I always have the answer. That's not a hundred percent accurate, you know? And so it, that's why I, I try to create videos around those topics too, just so that I'm being clear about my own struggles. And then hopefully that, that can connect with anybody who is going through the same thing, because that's the stuff that's a little bit more difficult to share sometimes or get to the bottom of, but it's so incredibly important for our health and progress because our mindset, I mean, the, the further down this road I get, the more I believe that is literally everything. Like we are what we think about all day long. We are what we tell ourselves. And so that's kind of the struggle I was having where it's like, I have to accept that I'm not healed yet on the one hand, right? Like I really can't go that far off plan. And I tested some things this month and I thought I felt really good about those experiences because I thought, wow, that does show me progress. It shows me how much I have healed in my mindset, how I think about alcohol and food and experiences. But then there was another, you know, situation that happened where I was like, this sucks, you know, and like, I just want to have an ice cream at the park with my kid. And why can't I do that? You know, and I was kind of having a pity party about it. And so, you know, that's just kind of, that's just life. And so, um, but it's, it's so fascinating to me to discuss 
the topic of of what we're thinking about and how that affects our health and our progress and our habits and our goals and all that stuff because at the end of the day that that is where like changes in my mindset and how I think about myself and what I'm saying to myself that internal dialogue that has made the biggest difference in my health in terms of that being the primary change that has allowed these dietary changes and other things to continue to take place and so that was a long-winded answer but but thank you Darren Darren and um I think you said you and your wife watch um or you you and your wife are both there so I appreciate you guys very much thank you um JC's here good morning hi United Carnivore. Good morning from Tampa Bay. Yay. Good morning. And Bill's here. Hey, Bill. How's your weather up there in Alaska? It's starting. Uh, I mean, we're on almost like polar, polar ends of the country here. Um, but we've had such weird fluctuating weather. We've had like 80s. It was like 90 degrees the other day. And then it went back down to 50s. And so... Sometimes I think that is a weird uh, thing too. Like when the weather changes so much, it that affects us too. Like I feel that in my jo my joints sometimes when, you know, a storm's rolling in and it's like, you know, you kind of feel that different pressure and things like that. So there's all kinds of like weird things that can affect our sleep and body and all this kind of stuff. Okay, Meg's. N says, one of our children is ASD, so my sleep schedule is rough. Sleep has improved lately for our child, but now I'm used to staying up till 2 to 3 a.m., wake up around 9, but now I'm waking up refreshed with six-ish hours. Interesting. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. That's, that's such a struggle. And um, yeah, when you, when you have a little one who's just not able to sleep or struggling. It's, it's like the worst. That's kind of what I've been feeling. She hasn't been, my little one hasn't been sick in quite a while. And so, um, this was just another reminder of like, Oh, my baby, you know, poor baby. But, um, so I'm curious, like if you, so you're feeling refreshed with around six hours of sleep. That's about what I got last night. I went to sleep around 10 30 um, maybe closer to 11. I woke up at four, a little bit after four and I read some stuff for a while. And then I fell back asleep a little bit after five and slept till seven. So I feel like mine's a little bit, I seem to do okay with that. Or if I can get a nap in the afternoon, if I've only gotten like five or six hours, sometimes I feel like I need a nap, but that's really interesting. So I'd be curious to know how, like how long I see your, um, you have bacon and cheese on here. So have you been carnivore for a while or are you like BBB and E or lion or what's your, what's your, um, kind of timeline there? Cause that's interesting. That's kind of what I want to know. It's like, well, how long do I go until this sort of regulates? And I feel like maybe six hours is good for me. So thanks for sharing that. Who's your carnivore? Hello. Hello. Listening while walking, my 5K per day. Yes, you inspired me last week. And here at the, I mean, we have, we live in an apartment, but there's a lot of parks around here. And <clears throat> excuse me, I try to get out like almost every day. We go to a park somewhere or we go, you know, do something outside, uh, myself and my little one. But I'm like, we have a gym here that has treadmills. Like I could just go take 30 minutes, you know, and go walk on the treadmill and read or work on, listen to a book or something like that to get my steps up. Cause yeah, you talked about your steps last week and that's, that's definitely something I want to incorporate more. And I have my little tracker watch. So I have it set to 6,000. I upped mine from 5,000 to 6,000, um, last week. And I've been hitting my 6,000 almost every day. So yes, that's awesome. The dude abides. Yay. Good morning again from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. We'll always be a cheese head at heart. I found some raw cheese this week, by the way, because I'm like, I can't give up cheese. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> and uh, I did try some. Bill says, we've been dealing with a crazy five-day windstorm. Yikes. And it's about 10 below right now. It got cold again. So ready for summer. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's gnarly. I can't imagine. I mean, I've always wanted to go to Alaska. 
um, I've seen, you know, like the commercials for those cruises, the whale watching cruises that go up and you can watch the icebergs fall and all that stuff. Um, but there used to be, what was this show I used to watch? Um, it was like, I think it was called like Alaska, the last frontier or something. And they documented these people that basically there was one woman that lived by herself up there. And, you know, and then there was a couple of, <clears throat> a couple of couples that had, or one was a small family and one was like a husband and wife and they, you know, just kind of followed their lives and like how crazy it is to live up there and how self-sufficient you really have to be for, th you know, situations like this when you can't get supplies, you can't drive to another town or, um, so I've always been really fascinated with, with Alaska, but I've never been there. So maybe someday. <clears throat> Miss E's here. Good morning. Good morning. Austin. And okay. Meg says, yes, it's pretty cool. I've actually been waking up a few minutes before my alarm. Oh, LOL. I've been carnivore since January 1st, keto since 2019. Nice. So I've been fat adapted, but switching gears has been so great so far. That's, that's really cool. So yeah, that gives us a good kind of time frame. So about two months carnivore, but you've been fat adapted for years. So that's, that's fantastic. Well, good for you. I'm glad. And I, I hope that's what's happening to me. I'm like, it'd be amazing if I could feel amazing on six hours, I would get so much more studying done. And, you know, I'm in two different courses right now. And I've got books that I'm trying, like, I love to study and I love to learn. And it's just hard to do it during the day when, you know, everything's going on. And I really love that quiet time in the early morning to myself to kind of do stuff like that. And so I would be really happy if I could, if I could just operate on six hours a day. The dude abides. I think fasting for too long can put extra stress on me. I stopped fasting and don't wake up anymore. That, that said the other day I ate breakfast and nothing else for the rest of the day. I woke up at three. Interesting. Okay. And I have been, and sorry for the light in here. It's sunny, but outside, but, uh, I have my shade down cause it, otherwise it's like 200 degrees over here in my corner, but I've kind of, I've been going back and forth with this cause I was thinking part of the reason why I was feeling really tired and fatigued and struggling, you know, to just like stay awake every day. The first six months of this was that I was potentially eating too much and that I needed to fast because that's what I did more of the last, like the first time I was on carnivore. I intermittent fasted every day. I would do like 24 hour, 36 hour fast, usually like once a week, something like that. But <clears throat> I've asked you guys too, or we've had discussions about this where, you know, people are seeing different things like that. Like fasting is a stressor and that's kind of why I didn't do it intentionally also during this first, you know, six ish months that I was on carnivore this time. Cause I, my main focus was like reduce my stress as much as possible. Cause I was feeling just hormonally extremely burnt out and just like, like I'm <laughs> just trying to, to live, you know what I mean? So every day and I was drinking a ton of coffee and it wasn't doing anything, you know? So I was like, hormonally, I felt like a wreck. And so I thought, you know, I'm cutting the exercise because that's a stressor. I'm only doing gentle exercise when I feel like it. And then I'm not going to fast. But then I was getting to this point where in January, after I did the lion diet for 30 days, I thought, I just kind of feel heavy. Like, I feel like I'm just still stuffing myself and I, and I need to just maybe eat less or shorten my window. So I did that. And then, but I also tried to drop my protein significantly and up my fat to really see if I could get to that 80% calories from fat ratio so that I could make sure that I'm in ketosis so that I could bring up my energy, start healing some of these inflammatory like skin things that I was still, still am dealing with. And so I've kind of been going back and forth on like, well, should I fast or should I not fast? And I've gotten different <clears throat> comments from, from you guys about what your experiences is. And I'm kind of leaning back towards this one is I think because I was doing like a, a four hour window for a few days, but I was still waking up early. And now that I have, I keep reaching for my meter, but I don't have it in front of me. Now that I have my meter, I 
like this morning I registered. So I ate one of my carnivore pemmican bars, which I'm about to finish filming the video today and get that up this week. I made carnivore pemmican bars and they're high fat. And so I ate one of like a half of one of those at about 10 o'clock last night before I went to bed to try to give you know myself that good boost of fat to sleep through the night. Um, forgot where I was going with that. <clears throat> I guess just that, um, well, I still woke up at four. Oh, so, but when I tested my blood this morning, it was the best GKI that I've gotten so far. My glucose was 80 and my ketones were 1.5. And so that, that's encouraging. And I didn't like intentionally fast yesterday. I ate probably three meals, but again, we were kind of, we were at the doctor, we were out getting some stuff. So like my day was not structured how it normally would have been. And I still got those numbers this morning, even though I didn't sleep optimally and I didn't, I didn't fast at all. Um, you know, intentionally it was probably like two hours, three hours between meals, something like that. So then I, you know, then I'm thinking, well, maybe I don't need to fast. Maybe the ideal thing for me to try would be eating three meals a day to make sure my body knows like, okay, you're safe. You're going to get food. You know, you're going to get the fat that, that it wants. And then that might start to regulate my sleep. And then I could add in potentially like a 36 or a 48, like once a month or something. If I feel like I need to, you know, try to work on my skin a little bit, or if I'm just feeling like I want to get into more of that autoph autophagic autophagy state auto, I don't know, whatever the conjugation of that is. Um, so that's kind of where I'm leaning now. And I agree. I think it's, it's so, it's so interesting how that in itself applies to sleep. And so I've been playing around with that, but now that I have more of the information from my glucose and ketone meter, that's helping me still kind of understand like, am I in ketosis? Is anything happening here? And then how's my sleep in relationship to that? So thanks for sharing that. And I think because fasting is such a, a hot topic, you know, and then people have strong opinions about which way you should be doing it. And for, you know, but it depends on your goals, right? It depends on what you're dealing with, what your goals are, and how far you've come already. And so I think for me still, I'm trying to prioritize ultimately the low stress, right? So that I can lower my inflammation, let my body heal and, um, <clears throat> you know, just keep moving forward. But I also don't like to hyper track things so much because that stresses me out. So it's like, it's, it's a balance. Lisa, hello. Sorry, I just joined, but one thing to help with the overall health and perhaps sleep is to go outside when you wake up and get 10 minutes of light in your eyes to activate all the glands. Yes, I totally I totally think that's a, a good thing to do. What I do is just open my, if, a lot of times I'm up near sunrise. I've been sleeping in later because I've been waking up and then falling back asleep. But um, I've been just opening my shade in the morning and I have an east facing window. And so I'll just like stand in front of that window first thing and let that morning light come in. Um, but going outside obviously would be ideal, getting that fresh air. So thank you. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work if you stay indoors. Okay, well, <laughs> I'll have to try to get up and do it before little one wakes up and I got to get the day going. I use a kitchen timer for 10 minutes. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I've seen anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes people do. Does mon, does momoto... I like your picture, by the way. You still drinking coffee? I hope not. I drink some decaf sometimes. Don't judge me, okay? Um, I do not drink caffeine, caffeinated coffee, and I know that there is a smidge of caffeine in decaf, but you know what? I'm a mom, and sometimes that's just life. Um, but I, I understand where you're going with this, and it's stress, right? And the potential for sleep disturbance. And so I don't drink any caffeinated coffee. 
Um, but I do have some decaf because I enjoy that and I put ghee in it um, to try to get my fats going in the morning. So, you know, I've actually had the insane thought lately of trying to find perhaps like a tea that I could tolerate to replace the coffee and see if that helps me at all. I know some, I've heard some people say that they, they drink like a, you know, some kind of herbal tea. Um, I just, you know, I've never really enjoyed tea and especially like black teas and things like that. Oh, talk about a stressor. I would, I mean, I felt like sometimes I'm almost about to have a panic attack from drinking like the, the brewed iced tea that we used to make in the restaurants. Like for the iced tea, it's like, holy mackerel, whatever. I don't know how much caffeine is in there, but I used to feel like, whoa, if I would drink any of that, just terrible. My gut would, it's like bloating, city, terrible. So I don't know. I've even ginger tea and even de I've tried decaf green tea in the past. They all seem to make me bloated, but I've heard some people say, you know, they have to get off the coffee or just to have like another vessel to add fat or something to, because I also take iodine, my iodine drops in my coffee, which is something that I think is really helping me. I take the Lugol's 2%, the one that Dr. Barry recommends, and I do two or three drops in one cup of coffee, you know, decaf in the morning. And that seems to be, you know, I think that's helping. Again, I haven't completely isolated that as a variable, but the more I read about iodine too, the more it's like, we're probably all deficient because it's just not in the soil, you know, it's not getting into our food. And so it's a good idea to at least try supplementing that. So coffee is sort of a, a vessel for me to get in some of this other stuff. And it is a comfort. It's still something that I enjoy. And I like to give myself on these days when I'm like, wow, I'm not making progress. You know what I mean? When I'm feeling sorry for myself. So, um, but yes, no, no caffeinated coffee anymore. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Miss E says, I think I jinxed myself. I said I was sleeping okay, but now I've randomly been waking at 315 to 345 every day. I tried to do NSDR to help with tiredness. What's NSDR? Do I know what that is? Oh, okay. I think I think you mentioned this last time. The Yoga Nidra was that you that mentioned that? Um, that's interesting. I'll look into that because I don't think I've ever officially done that. Like you would think, as a I've been doing yoga for like twelve. 15 years or something, I would have really gotten into that more. But um, okay, that's interesting. Because I kind of if I'm if I'm understanding that right, I kind of almost feel like I can do these where I'm not sleeping, but they're almost like power naps where I will just kind of sit up and close my eyes. It's almost like a meditation, but I lean back into a pillow, you know, I'm like kind of supported. And just close my eyes for 10 minutes. And that seems to help sometimes if I'm just like really, really dragging and I'm wanting to grab some of that caffeinated coffee, right. That I'm giving up. So I wonder if that's similar to what you're doing, but isn't it, it's just weird, right? Like it's a cortisol thing. That's, or that's what's happening at that time in the morning. Um, Darth carnivore. Hello. Do you eat any liver? I just started taking a beef liver capsule to see if it helps with thinning hair, but noticed I wake up earlier, like 4 or 5 a.m. versus 6 a.m. like normal, but feel energized and refreshed. Oh, I hope that's what's happening to me. I, um, I used to take on my first round and also when I was pregnant, I took the ancestral supplements, um, their, their grass-fed beef liver capsules, and I also took, I took a few of those, um, different ones. I think I took the, they just have a, a tallow one and I took a couple different organs, but I took the liver pretty consistently for quite a while. Um, and also when I was pregnant, but I haven't taken those in a while, but I, I do, there's a company that reached out to me and sent me their liver chips. And I think I posted, I put those in a post this week and I've started throwing some, a couple of those in on the side for my meals and they're good. They're really crispy. Um, they taste like liver, but they, uh, don't, 
they don't have a super strong taste, I think. And they've been, ref this company, Nose to Tail Provisions, they've been refining their their process here. So every time I get a bag, it's like thinner and thinner. So they're they're really like wafer thin, really good actually. And I like those. And so I've been trying to eat like a few pieces of that this week. Um, well, over the last couple of weeks. So before that, I was not eating any organs um, or liver. But those I like, and I would be open to taking the ancestral supplement liver again, which I think I have some buried up in my cupboard somewhere in the supplement den. Um, but that's interesting too, because there again, it's like, who knows, it could be some weird micronutrient that I'm just not quite getting enough of. And as a side note, I've been using chronometer now. I started out with MyFitnessPal, but I switched over to chronometer and I just have the free account, but it actually has like a micronutrient breakdown when you add all your foods in there and it'll tell you like how much B12 did you get, how much of, you know, all of these things, vitamins. And I think that's really interesting because, you know, again, like adding in some tracking metrics here could like that, if I added liver and said, oh, look at this bump in such and such mineral that I'm getting now or whatever. And then that helps see how that correlates with my sleep. It's like, well, maybe that's what I needed more of. And so I should keep going with the liver type of thing. So yeah, that's interesting. I think again, like that's kind of a topic that's very, I don't know if I'd say hot and cold, but I mean, some people were saying like, you got to eat nose to tail. You've got to eat organs to have, you know, a healthy meat based or meat only diet. Right. And that organs are essential or that they're very, very important. And then other people say, I never eat organs and I'm fine. So it's kind of, again, something to experiment with. And there's, thankfully, there are a lot of things if you don't like the taste of liver, like I don't necessarily, to just buy it from the store and eat it or even mixing it in my burgers sometime. I've tried that in the past and I'm like, whoa, I can taste this. So I do like those liver crisps and the capsules are obviously a convenient and easy way to, to do that too. BK, Belgian carnivore. Hello. Hot owl carnivores. <clears throat> Blue board analysis. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I guess that's what these are called. Um, I appreciate that. Good morning. I'm Jerry. It's nice to catch your live stream. Hey. Um, have you been in here before? Or have you been? I don't think I've, I recognize your name or photo from a previous one, but glad to have you. It looks like you're in the UK or Europe or something. Very cool. It's so neat that we just all get to connect from around the world. I know everybody says that, but it's when you're actually in here and it's like, wow, we've got people from everywhere. It's so cool. Eat the fat says oolong tea is lower in caffeine and oxalates. Yes. I used to drink oolong tea uh, during my first round of carnivore, I can't remember why I chose that, but I think because it was fermented and I was trying to figure out if I could get any kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, fermented food into my life because I could not tolerate seemingly anything else like sauerkraut, kimchi, you know, real fermented pickles, anything like that. And I think that's how I ended up finding oolong tea. Um, and I don't mind the taste of it. It's pretty good, but maybe I'll try that. But it's, uh, yeah, it still has some caffeine. So I don't know. But then you bring up the oxalate thing, which is very interesting because that's what um, Sally K. Norton recommends too, is like a cup of tea, like green tea or, you know, perhaps this. If you're dealing with oxalate stuff, you can kind of tell if you ingest like one cup of this tea and it's a little bit of oxalate and your symptoms back off you know, that might be a good way to mediate, you know, if you're, if you're suffering from the oxalate thing. And so dark chocolate's another one that has caffeine in it and, um, could, if you have like, you know, an ounce or something like that and see how that affects you, that's a good way to sometimes tell if that's what you're dealing with. So thanks. Um, I take bladder rack for natural iodine. I have no idea what that is. Bladder rack. Let, please enlighten me. I don't know what that is. Natural iodine. Well, and um, on my first round too, I would I would try sea, you know, seaweed because seaweed has 
iodine. Um, and so, yeah, I would, ideally, I would like to get everything from a food source, right? Because the food, that's what I'm always kind of wary of supplements, right? Because yeah, there might be research behind the supplement or there might be, you know, great reviews behind the supplement, but, um, you know, are, we're not meant to take supplements. We're meant to eat whole foods and derive the nutrition in the perfect balance and ratio along with the other things that are complementary to that nutrient, right? So like eating the whole food is the perfect balance in a perfect world. It would be the perfect balance of the nutrition that that food offers in the proper ratios, right? And or you could flip it around and you could say we are adapted to absorbing nutrition from whole foods because that's the form that they were in when we have been eating them for the you know entirety of our evolution up until about 10,000 years ago. So um well maybe yeah around agriculture you know everything everything changed. So rather than taking an iodine drop for instance I would rather just eat some natural form like seaweed or something like bladder rack which I don't know what that is but um Right now, I'm just like, I'll take the drops so that I can see, and then maybe I'll try adding the seaweed in at some point. Because I like, and like sushi, you can have the little, um, gosh, what are they called now? It's how long I've been out of this industry, where it's just like the hand roll, where it's just the seaweed wrap, and they put rice in it, but then the fish on top. So I could just do that without rice, and it'd be perfect. Okay. Darren Earp says, hi, B and all. Carnivores are truly the best and most wholesome community in today's world. I would have to agree, although I will admit my bias here. But I think so. I love this community, and I think everybody's so supportive. And the more the more of us are out here talking in, in chats like this, comments, creating channels, um, the more this is going to grow and the more it's not going to seem like some freakish fringe, you know, way of life because our stories are powerful, you know, and the more of us get out here and talk about it and continue to talk about it, um, the more other people are going to be like, Hey, there must, there might be something to this. And I see comments like that all the time, you know? And so I agree. I think, I think people in this community are, are out for, the, the right reason. It's like, let's get healthy. Let's change our lives so that we can be who we are, you know, so we can be happy and, and enjoy life and live a fulfilling life and, and do the things we love to do with the people we love and spend our time the way we want to spend our time, right? Not feeling terrible and sick and in and out of doctor's offices and surgeries and all this stuff. Like, let's go outside and play and have, have fun. So I agree. All right. BK says the supplements I take are magnesium, zinc, liver, oh, cod liver oil and vitamin D3. Right. And I think, um, yeah, I've been sort of like anti supplement for a long time, but I think, you know, the more I learned too. And in, when I had this conversation with Dr. Barry and we talked about like boron and specifically and how, you know, we just don't have the quality soil. So like whether you're talking about plants or animals, we don't, always know exactly what is the nutrient content of these foods, especially produce, right? Plants that grow in one square meter of soil their entire existence and only have access to that, you know, however deep their, their roots go and what, you know, they only have access to that. And I know, you know, industrial farming is a little bit different. A lot of stuff's hydroponically grown where they have control over that. But as a consumer, you know, we just don't always know especially with plants and even with animal products sometimes who buy who eat you know hundreds of pounds of plants over their lifetime and bioaccumulate these different nutrients which makes them a better choice right because there's a much higher chance that that those animal products are going to contain the nutrition since they had you know more of a chance to get a different uh, you know get variety in their plant diet and bioaccumulate that nutrition. But I think there's there's a great argument for taking things like this, um, especially depending on the, the climate you're in. Like um, I if I'm thinking of where you are correctly, like it's it's a little bit more north, right? So 
um, like taking vitamin D and doing the cod liver oil and stuff like that is going to be helpful during long winters and stuff like that. I've been taking some vitamin D even just over the short winter that we've had. So it's, um, you know, I think there's definitely a time and place for supplementation. And I, that's one thing I've kind of changed my mind about since I've learned more information, I don't know, in the last couple of years or so. Um, but I'm still not a big, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I gravitate towards supplements primarily. I'm going to, I always feel like it's best to try to get that again from the whole food because the food is sort of like, you know, God's perfect gift, right? It's just, it's what it is in the correct ratios with the other things that work with it so that it is best absorbed and utilized by our body. Yeah, Lee says, um, if you didn't grow up eating organs, don't expect to eat them. Only some people can do it. Don't worry about the food police, LOL. Yeah, it's, um, again, this is so individual. And I think, you know, kind of bringing it back to the context of sleep, right? Like there, we're, we're all, we're all in a, this is the frustrating part of, of this question and why I wanted to do a part two, because it's like, really, you just kind of have to keep poking at this until you feel like something resonates with you. Um, so maybe something that somebody said today and you're, you're here live or you're watching this in the replay, it's like, Ooh, that sounds like me, you know, and that's where you can go explore. Um, you know, maybe it's this liver thing that stood out to you, or maybe it's the f too much fasting thing that stands out to you, or maybe it's, Hey, I, the organ thing seems interesting to you. It's like, well, maybe I should try more, or maybe I should back off a little bit. Cause I'm just kind of doing this because everybody else said I should be eating these and I don't really like them or something, or, you know? So it's, it's hard to, it's hard to know the answer to this sometimes, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I know I've heard stories of people saying they, you know, they had to eat liver and onions growing up. Um, like that was a once a month or once a week or something meal that their family had. And so I, I assume, yes, it's probably an acquired taste and it's something to definitely experiment with to see. And again, I, I've it's kind of as a side note here, but you know, people with gut issues too, we have to remember that you might be putting the right foods in your mouth, but is because you have a compromised gut, are you actually able to efficiently absorb that nutrition? And that's something that I have been thinking a lot about too. And one of the reasons why I decided to try to add some liver in is because I thought, you know, I should be, I don't, Theoretically, I can be getting everything I need from just eating, excuse me, meat. But if I'm if I'm still dealing with some gut inflammation, or my gut is still healing, then maybe adding something like this in is just going to give me a boost of something that I'm just for whatever reason not able to fully absorb. And so, kind of like taking a supplement in that sense, um, but in the whole food version. So, yeah. And I, it's, the further I go on, I worry less and less about the food police again, because like that's kind of what I was getting to in, in the earlier answer about being honest with you guys and, and talking about some of these mindset components and, and the deeper reasons why we might struggle with being on on and off plan and stuff like that is because, you know, I don't I don't ever want to see this community get super, super dogmatic about you know, can't have black pepper, or if you have, you know, some cheese one day, you're not a carnivore or whatever, you know, and there's, I, although I don't see that a whole lot, you know, most people, I'd say all the people that I am currently following watching videos say, do what's right for you, you know, but there's always a potential there for us to kind of get into that ideological trap of, well, this is the only way to do something. And so, you know, I, I'm kind of on team like, hey, have have what you can tolerate, you know, have as much variety as you like and feel that works for you. And if that means you're staying lion, great. If that means you're moving to keto, fine. But I think, you know, the boundary around that is a proper human diet is a an ancestrally appropriate diet, which would include anything really into from paleo, just excluding processed crap and grain based food, you know, grains um, to lion. And so we can all find our place within that spectrum. And the food police can just go on being negative 
people because it's not helping anyone. Okay. It's a sea. Oh, it's a seaweed. Okay, cool. Because that's what I, I didn't know that, but I thought, oh, seaweed is the only food that came to mind that I was like, I know that has a lot of iodine. Um, and shrimp. This is a funny story. Um, I thought for years and years and years that I was allergic to the iodine and shrimp. I think, I think I probably got food poisoning sometime when I was, I don't even know how old I was pretty young, but not like a baby or not like a kid, maybe like 12 or 14 or something. Um, but I remember like the doctor saying that, oh, you were probably allergic to the iodine. And so I avoided shrimp for like, I don't know, a decade or something. And I, it's so funny because I worked, um, I really started eating it again when I, I worked at like beach bars, beach side restaurants um, for years. And so there was like a lot of, a lot of seafood around and I kind of, you know, but it was so long that I was just like, oh, I can't have shrimp. I can't have shrimp. I'm allergic to the iodine in shrimp. And then I kind of just forgot about it after a while and started eating it, you know, cause it's like, oh, this is a, something I can eat while I'm at work or, you know, just eat a few shrimp or something and nothing happened, you know? And so this is actually so interesting because I had this realization about a month ago when I was craving seafood so much. I was like, I just want shrimp, oysters, like crab legs sound so good to me. What is going on? And so, you know, it could be the iodine because I stopped the iodine drops for lion diet in January because I stopped drinking the decaf too. And I craved seafood all month. So yes, absolutely. Wild cut shrimp, great source for iodine. I probably am iodine deficient then because I avoided all that stuff for a long time. Okay, thank you. Bladder rack is a type of seaweed. Yay. Let's see. Crystal, hi. She says, carnivore community are such a great tribe. I think maybe because we feel so much better than sad eaters. I think so. Yeah, I do. And I think um, positivity, like when you, when you feel good every day, it's just much easier to be positive, right? And it's easier to show love and compassion towards other people, you know, regardless of where they're at on their journey or you may or may not agree with, with people. Um, but it's easier to just be a nice person when you feel better. Right. I know that is, that is definitely something I can tell. And I'm a better mom when I'm feeling good, you know, and I'm feeling like I've got some energy and I'm not feeling like I'm literally a zombie. So yeah, I think, I think that is definitely a byproduct of, of the way we eat. We are what we eat and what we think about all day long. <laughs> Darren says, our feedback today would be, you're looking very healthy and amazing today. Thank you. We all like to hear it. Thanks for sharing your journey with us. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Again, kind of despite having a few off days, you know, where our schedule, my routine was not, um, you know, not normal because um, Little Booper was sick. But um, we've been getting, trying to get out and get some sun. Like that makes such a huge difference for me. And, um, just, I mean, I guess you could say almost in one way I had more relaxation the last couple of days. Cause I just was kind of like laying down with her a little bit. And, um, I've been super busy in the kitchen too, though, making like the, these pemmican bars, which I'm going to get a video out. I'm super excited about those. So I've, you know, I've kind of just been in my own, own little world, <laughs> um, again for the last few days and, um, just been in, you know, more kind of quiet time because it's a little bumper and playing around in the kitchen. And so, yeah, that's all stuff I, I love to do. So thanks. Yeah. And it's supposed to get, it's supposed to be nice today and then get rainy and kind of this week. So we're going to try and get outside again today and get, get some fresh air and some sun. Darth Carnivore. I learn a lot from other keto carnivore and one self ex n equals one self experiments. One of the great benefits of this community. Yes, I I 100% agree. I think that's where that's where I have learned the most. You know, it's like 
I learn a lot from the doctors. I love, I love listening to Dr. Barry's like Monday night lives. Cause you, you just hear so many different questions and a lot of them are kind of the same old questions, but it just helps to, again, like you just hear so many different people sharing their success stories, but also asking really good questions, you know? And then it's like, I always learn something and you know, Dr. Barry and, and Nisha, they do such a great job of, of answering questions. And, um, I love to listen to Dr. Chafee's live streams and, um, too, for kind of the same reason. So like, I just, I love learning about this and, and yes, we can learn so much just from other people's individual stories. And that's why I get so tired of hearing sometimes like folks on the, on the other side of the spectrum talking about, oh, well, these, these anecdotes, they're not science, you know, essentially well, nice anecdote, but you know, let's see a paper on it. And, and to me that like, that like triggers me. <laughs> I'm just like, we are the experiment. Don't you understand? You know, like we are literally going against everything that has been considered right and healthy and the way to do it for, you know, probably argue the last hundred years. And so, well, maybe not, maybe like the fifties on when the, I don't know the, the, the low fat thing was the eighties, but you can see kind of things changing but even before then but really you know like industrialized food goes back to you know whatever 100 years ago so anyway it's like we it's there's too many anecdotes now to look aside you know and just pretend like they don't mean anything or that it's not valid information that warrants more research right? Like, why is this working for so many people? Why is doing the opposite of what is considered healthy by modern standards, uh, changing people's lives and people are happy now and their mental health is better and they're getting off all these meds. Like, you know, is it a conspiracy or is it just, um, people haven't heard enough information about this. So yes, I learned, I learned so much just from listening to other people's stories. I love doing that. And, Yep, the fact that everybody's so willing to to come on and share is amazing because that's not easy to do, you know, to go on the internet and open yourself up to the wide world of criticism and, and people too. So, yes, community is great. Um, BK says, I really don't mind cheese so long as it's full fat cream cheese. Yeah, my little one loves cream cheese, the full fat cream cheese. Scott, good morning or good day. Um, he says, carnivore makes me feel more gratitude and makes me feel more like being of service. I 100% agree. And I think that is, that's kind of one of the fundamental reasons why I, you know, my tagline is kind of become who you are, or is that for this channel is because it, it, it plays to this, or it, it talks, speaks to this idea, which is, you know, our health is the foundation if we can get that straight and, you know, not that we have to feel perfect every single day, but get to a, a good baseline, you know, that's when you meet those needs and your body is, is functioning the way that it's supposed to function, then you can go higher up the order, right? You can go higher up to more of that self-actualized journey where you are looking at, okay, what are my gifts? What can I give back to others? How can I support someone else who's in need? How can I, you know, that's, we all want to do that. But when we're bogged down with illness and we're bogged down with fatigue and not sleeping well, and, you know, just feeling like a zombie all the time, we can't do those things. We can't show up as the, the people that we all know that we can be. And so that's why I love being a part of this community and I, and I am working to continually, you know, work on that in myself as well, because that's what I think is the most meaningful thing we can all do with our lives is to be of service, is to help someone else, right? Is to share what we've learned and what has helped us with somebody else. And we're going to share this wisdom with the next generation, with our children, bringing them up in, you know, health and truth as much as we possibly can. And that is what changes the world. It's like, ooh, goosebumps. It's like, it's not a top down thing. It's a bottom up thing, right? We have to be, literally be the change that we want. We want a, the world to reflect. Whatever we want to see, we have to take, you know, 
in a sense, that burden upon ourselves to try to become that as best we can. And so to me, that's the ultimate expression of being of service is to, you know, get myself to a place where I'm, you know, I'm good, I'm taken care of, I'm, I'm doing all the things that, you know, the habits, the behaviors, the practices that make me feel best. And then I can let that, let that cup overflow into the other people that are around me, into the people that I come in contact with online, in my family, whatever, you know, community I have in person, like all that spills over. And so I think that's a great, that's a great point. And I think that's, you know, most of our goals, right? Okay. We're coming up close to the hour here. And I know, I, I know we didn't like a hundred percent focus on sleep, but I think we, we got some good things in some good comments today. And, um, Again, kind of, well, read your comment first, Darth Conover. It's like we've turned to the dark side of conventional nutrition wisdom. Yes, exactly. Welcome to the dark side. Yes. And I think it's the side of light. I think it's the side of truth, in my humble opinion. Oh, I like this. Uh, the plural of anecdote is data. Exactly. Right. It's like, how many anecdotes do you need before it becomes data? Well, that's changing. I think, uh, I think Rivero health, Sean Baker's, um, you know, the co-founder of, of Rivero health. I think that's going to be huge. I know like, again, like, and these doctors who are now have big followings who are getting this information out we're going to start seeing things like shift in the, in the medical community and more people are going to get on board. I'm super excited for KetoCon this year too. Cause I know, well, I don't know how many like doctors will be there, but I've never been to an event like that. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious to see like how many medical professionals are there. Like, you know, just to kind of get inspired. It's like, this is, we, things are changing and this, these anecdotes are adding up and people in the, in the professional sphere you know, can make changes here too. So, um, BK says the more we have in this, in the community, the more it will get shared and the more we'll try it. That makes sense. Yes. And right. That's why I'm so grateful for all of you guys being here and just commenting about the topic and trying to help others that, cause really it's like, I don't have the specific answer for every person watching this. I can just share what, what I've been doing. And I kind of do want to, um, just share a little bit of that because I, and I've been trying to actually post more of what I'm eating because um, I'm, I'm really shooting for high fat and low stress are my kind of like my two main guiding stars here. So whatever I can do to be lower stress, which again, we talked about fasting and then, um, you know, not over exercising, doing, getting outside, getting light, um, nighttime routine is something I've been working on. I start my nighttime routine now at like 6 p.m. because that's about the time here when it's starting, to, you know, it's dusk, it's starting to get dark. So I let natural light only in the house until then. And then I only turn on like these low lumen kind of candle like um, lights if possible. Um, and then I just really worked at like trying to get everything done really that matters, you know, before six. And then we just take a nice like two and a half hour time, my daughter and I to like take a bath or take our shower or read some books, you know, just really take an extra probably about 90 minutes versus what we used to be doing to wind down and get ready for bed and just make it a super calming, like hyper relaxing space. So that's been helping. And then I think too, as I get as I stay longer in therapeutic, this sort of therapeutic level of ketosis, that's going to be a game changer too. And so I'll, you know, be reporting back through posts and things like that about where, where I'm at with that. Um, and then again, then again, it's hard to tell because I've had two day, two or three days where my schedule was completely off. So that kind of throws off the, the, um, quality of the tracking, but, um, the, the kind of the point today was to get as many comments, have as many people share as possible so that whatever resonates with you, that might be, you know, the thing that you need to check out. So um, I do have three quick journal prompts to leave you with today. Um, number one is a good question to ask. And, and I've heard a couple people say this now in different videos that I've watched is 
when you wake up in the middle of the night, just try to ask yourself right away, what right away, what woke me up? What woke me up? And sometimes you'll you'll kind of just get an answer or you'll something will come to your mind. Um, I did this a few nights ago and um, well, one night I knew for sure it was the noise outside because it was like super windy and my window kind of rattles when it's windy and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. So I'm like, it was the window. Okay. And then, um, so just like trying to just ask yourself that question and then let your subconscious, like see what comes to your mind right away. What woke me up? And then that could be a place to explore more. Number two, what makes me sleepy again? For me, it's reading. So like when I woke up this morning and I felt like I could get up at four, but I was still feeling like, uh, I don't think I got enough sleep. So I just, um, and yeah, I use my phone, so don't judge me, but, um, I turned the like nightlight thing on and I just read, I just got my book and just read for about an hour and I got super sleepy and I went back to sleep. And so reading has always put me out. <laughs> so, so it could be something as simple as, you know, grab, having a book uh, sitting by your nightstand or something that might help you get drowsy again. Um, and number three, what's one new relaxation technique that you might want to try? And I think we had Miss E dropped a good suggestion here in the comments too um, about trying different relaxation techniques because you might be doing one and maybe adding, you know, stacking a couple on top might help. So breath work is one that I wrote down, meditation of some kind. I do self-hypnosis and aromatherapy is one that I wanted to add. I have a little um, like a spritzer thingy that you can put um, essential oils in and I'm had it in my kitchen forever, but I think I'm going to move it in the bedroom and put like some lavender oil or something really light in there. And then light blocking. I did get a sleep mask and that seems to help. Although sometimes I find myself taking it off in the middle of the night. But um, yes, Miss E says Yoga Nidra, NSDR. Yeah, so Google this if I'm going to Google this and um, see if that's something I could incorporate during my day too. So thanks. Yeah, there's, there's so many different things that could help. And so... I thank everybody for being in here today and participating and sharing your advice and your solutions. And, you know, to kind of sum it up, it's like, you just got to keep trying stuff, right? We're all in it. N equals one. We all have different, um, we all have the same needs in, in sort of this bucket, right? That we can understand. Like we need sunlight. We need to be synced with our circadian rhythm. We need proper nutrition. We need the right amount of exercise, not chronic cardio and chronic over-exercise, right? We need relaxation and playtime and just like mental stimulation that's has no, um, you know, bearing on an outcome. It's kind of like crossword puzzles or, you know, just things that entertain you but aren't screens or or related to work or stuff like that so like we we need all these different things but the thing that you need um only you really know and so that's kind of the the great thing about this community and about conversations like today is we can just throw a bunch of ideas out there and then um so hopefully many will be helped by it so i will be posting um more of my high fat stuff this week and I'll be getting you a video out about how to make carnivore pemmican bars and I'll be discussing how like how you can choose the ratio that you want like if you want an 80 20 or more of a 50 50 ratio like how to calculate all that so that you can make them at home and kind of have these for grab and go things so anyway thanks everybody I appreciate each and every one of you have a fantastic week and keep eating that mate.